Window coverings, what a pain in the neck. They can be so problematic. I've had so many different versions and today I wanna to show you what I've come up with. This works very well. I've been testing it now for three months and what's great about it is it fully fills the space. There's no light leakage, it's custom fit and it's got five layers of insulation. This actually stays warm because you can't feel any cold and it's actually warmer than the door panels. They just pop in and then they can store easily in your car. One of the neat things about these is they're the same shape as the hatch so you can use them to cover something up or you can just stack them up against the side when you're not using them. So today I'm going to show you how to make the ultimate window inserts that are hyper insulated and that are going to keep you warm this winter. So if you're interested in making them, I'll show you how. Stay tuned. So let's go over the materials that we're going to need. Um, you're going to need uh, some Reflectix and we're going to do two layers of Reflectix. We're going to need a, sh a ballpoint pen with a sharp tip. This is going to be important for making an accurate pattern. You're going to need a medium tip sharpie, um, a razor edge, which is going to make things much faster, your glue gun, and this is called plast Plasticolite, and this is Lowe's version, and there's the name of it. I call it corrugated vinyl. A pair of scissors, some duct tape, and an appropriate blackout material, a straight edge for cutting line, and this is masking paper, and this is what I'm going to make my pattern out of. So let's talk about what layers we're gonna use. All right, I'm going to make these reversible, and I'll tell you later on, later on why that's important. So the first layer, um, the outside layer, is gonna be appropriate blackout material. Um, I wouldn't use cotton. Cotton absorbs water, it can mildew and rot. This is actually a vinyl product that's got vinyl on one side and then it's got a fabric uh, material on the other side and it, it feels just like um, polyester on this side but this is going to be uh, this won't wick up the water and so this came from Walmart so we're going to add to that so that's outside so we're going to add to that a layer of Reflectix and then we're going to add to that the corrugated vinyl and if you notice it's got these little tubes in there and this is going to serve as our first air gap and if you look at the label on Reflectix one layer of Reflectix on its own doesn't have much R value where it comes into its own is when you supply an air gap where the air can't circulate so a static air gap so that's what this is going to serve as then we're going to do another layer of Reflectix so there you see there's our air gap and then we're going to seal these tubes here so the air can't move. And then we're gonna finish it off with another layer of material. So here's our window sandwich, and this is where you're gonna get a lot of insulated value. I'm gonna kind of run through on how the pattern process works because how well your window insert turns out is how much time you take on the pattern. So it's important to take your time with this and to be very accurate. So I just picked a lid, it's a difficult shape. Um, with lots of curves and I'll show you the process. So this is masking paper. Uh, I forget the name that it's, that it's listed under, but where you'll find this is in the paint section at the hardware store. This is where you mask off a whole lot of stuff. So this, this was a huge roll and it was only a, a couple bucks, two or three bucks. So you're gonna wanna cut a piece that's you know roughly the size of what you're doing. Now, if you, you're gonna be doing windows that are bigger than just this roll, and so you'll have to tape together a couple pieces. Now why this paper works so well is it's designed not to let paint pass, and I think it's got some sort of waxy coating on it, which I think is what makes it interesting, but that allows it to hold its shape. So what I do is get in there in the window, and you're just gonna jam this around. Just work it in. I'm just going to rub that around there and hold the whole thing in place as best you can. You're probably going to have to tape some down and just really push it in to everything. It'll crinkle up on you. Just keep pushing it down because what we're looking for is we want to form a crease. So once it's pushed down well, you're going to take 
your fine tip ballpoint pen and you're gonna have to drag it like this if you try to draw it on like that it'll it'll split the paper and so what I'm gonna do is just drag it around lightly around these edges here and you might have to kind of just keep going like this and just get right down in that crack and this is where your accuracy comes is right here so take your time so I finished drawing that line in and then we can pull this out and then when we straighten the paper out you're going to have a line there with your pattern and then what you're going to do is take your scissors and cut All right, so I finished cutting it out and you can see it's not perfect but we're gonna have some room to trim later on because we're going to you know add a little bit to the edges that we'll be able to trim off but there you can see it's pretty close okay I've cut out a piece of paper roughly to size and I'm gonna center it in here all my edges make sure I've got overlap on all the edges all right, good. And then start pushing it in and making a crease. And really work the corners. And on a window this size, it's fairly easy because you can use one hand to hold it in place. When you get to the bigger windows, you're going to have to do some taping and use multiple pieces so it gets to be a bit more challenging. And the cool thing about this paper is, once you jam it in all the corners, it tends to stay by itself. So then I'll make my line making sure to stay in the corners and if it cuts the paper a little bit that's fine at least you know that's actually where the line's supposed to be so here you can see how fine a line that makes and the corners get a nice pattern so here's the pattern now we can see it with a little better light and you can see how what a nice crisp edge you get and sometimes in these corners I didn't do the best, but I get close enough where I can estimate it when I'm cutting it with the scissors because there'll be enough guidelines. So the next step then is to cut it out right at the line. Good news is also you one pattern does two windows because the window on the other side will just flip it over. So you'll get to reuse this pattern. And I'd also recommend pick one of these small windows to do first and do the process all the way through because you're going to learn a lot as you go through the process and you're going to get better and better at it. So by the time you get to that big hatch window, <laughs> you're going to have a good process down and a nice product. So it's okay to mess up on these little ones. Um, you're going to live and learn and you'll see how they fit. Okay, the next step I'm going to do, cut it out. It turned out pretty good. So I'm just going to tape this down with some scotch tape onto that corrugated vinyl and just a few just a few places because we're going to have to trace this out with the sharpie just enough to hold it in place so then you're going to take your medium point sharpie and the reason i don't use medium is i'm going to draw a line down here and um, it's going to give me some width and then i'm going to cut outside that line so that's going to how it's going to be a little oversized now most of these windows have straight lines um, you can check it with your straight edge and this will speed things up this particular one only has a straight edge for just a little bit so I'm not gonna do that one but I think these other two have more of a straight line so if I can put it here and I can see a straight line like I street see here I can see a straight line there so I'm gonna put it where I can see it and then I can take my sharpie just make a big line now you can see that doesn't but you can see how that's going to save you some time drawing and also cutting so then I'm just going to hand draw staying off the paper and just on the plastic which, we, which involves getting up pretty close take your time just go slow don't push the paper now I've removed the pattern and you can see my draw lines aren't perfect <laughs> they're kind of all over the place I filled in the lines where I had the tape so the next part is cutting it now I've got a piece of um, wood that I had left over you're going to need something underneath it otherwise you're going to cut right through your carpet so what I'm going to do here is even though this is kind of a curved line 
I'm going to get a nice cut and I'm going to cut on the outside of the black. So I'm going to move this a little bit over so I can't see the black there. And I'm going to hold this down. I'm going to take my razor blade. I'm going to go here and I'm going to carefully cut right along here. And if it doesn't go all the way through, that's fine. It's really easy to cut once you got the first part done. So here I've kind of got some of it I kind of don't. So if you just flip it over, you can see that. And then you can take your knife and just cut through there carefully. <laughs> and so there you have your cuts. So I'll go around and I'll finish off this line. I'll cut this line. And I'll cut this line using my straight edge. They'll give me a great line and it will be much faster than doing it by hand. I made all my big straight line cuts. And so you can see I'm going to need to trim off some here, here, and here. And that's simply going to be done with a good pair of scissors. So again, we're going to cut on the outside of the line. So leave the black line. And so we're going to trim all this up. All right. So I've done my cuts. And again, it's not perfect. And now we're going to be ready to test fit it. So sometimes these tests fit so well, you can't get them back out of the window. So what I do is I take the duct tape and I make some handles. And put this on both sides and leave a big tab here. Because these, these are nice tight edges and they like to get behind trim pieces and hold really well. So let's go test fit it in the car. All right, just dig in there, push, and it's very tight. All right, I have pushed it in tight in every single edge. And at this point, it's probably a little too big, which is fine. I see I've got a little bit too much over here because it's buckling up here. So I'll need to take some off here. So I'll take my pin. So I'll take my pin and kind of mark where I need to trim some off. And then down here at the bottom, I definitely have too much. So I'm going to mark that where I need to trim a little off. And this, I'm just going to take a little off at a time and keep test fitting it until I get something that fits just right. And at this point, you'll see why you need these tabs. Oh, it comes out real easy that way. So I've done a lot of trimming on it. Just a little at a time. Take your time. And you don't want it so tight that it's jammed in there that it buckles. You just want it to fit in. You know, just, I'll just show you. Just, just pop it in. And it just snaps right in. Now, I cut this one a little too short here, but that's okay. Because we're going to add three more layers. There's going to be a layer of tape and two layers of material. So that's going to make it even tighter. So don't worry if you've got little light gaps and things like that. But again, um, this is where you don't want to have it too tight. Because it'll be after we glue on the other layers, we won't be able to come back and trim it down. Okay, that was the harder part. This part's pretty fun and pretty easy. So I've cut, rough cut a piece of Reflectix. And we're going to take our trusty Sharpie and we're going to trace this out onto the Reflectix. And we're not going to make it any bigger, so you can get real close to the edge here with your pen. And so we'll just trace it out. Now this time, we don't want the Reflectix to go over the edge because it's just going to keep building this up and building this up and then it won't fit in the window anymore. So we're actually going to cut on the inside of the black line. So when you finish, you won't see any black line on your Reflectix. Right, so now we've done the piece that'll go on the outside. And I like marking it inside and outside because you can get turned around and you'll have a piece you'll have to use on the other side. So you can see when I put this on here that you can't see the Reflectix because it's just to the inside, which we want. And so now I'm going to make one for the other side. There we have our Reflectix sandwich. So the next thing I want to do is I want to seal all the um, air barrier here. I'm going to seal that up. This is the end of part one, so there'll be a part two to continue to show you how this is going to turn out. Here's a quick preview. This is the final product. It turned out really well. I'm very happy with it. It's going, to have, it's going to block all the edges, and it has got a lot of insulation. So let's go with part two.